header files. We've already seen the use of header files with our standard io.h, and I think we even use an std lib, a standard lib.h, a little earlier on. Header files are used in the C programming language to define other variables and information that is not generally functions. .c source files should contain function declarations for your program. Remember, you can have a whole bunch of different C source files, and your development team can work all over the world, and, and everyone works on their own source file and their own functions, compiles them, tests them, and so on, and then they're all brought together at the end to create a program. Well, the header files will contain all of the external variable declarations, like we just saw in talking about scope and externs, which would not generally be part of a C source file. The header files can be created one time, kept in a central repository, and then included, pound included, by the preprocessor. And we will see a lot more of the preprocessor later. It has a, its own section. Uh, the preprocessor will include the header files, which sets up all of the externs and other variables to be used by the various functions. Otherwise, we'd have to define those and repeat those definitions over and over again in every C source file, and you can be sure that we would mess it up eventually and misspell something, uh, just a typo or something like that. So the header files make it a lot uh, easier on us. The C language also comes with a number of header files, as we saw, standard IO, standard live. There's a math.h, there's C type, there's a lot of .h's. And you can go looking through your compiler implementation and find in its library those header files and look through them and see the kinds of things that are defined in those headers that you can use later on. A lot of preprocessor directors, uh, I'm not going to talk about those because we haven't seen them yet and they won't make any sense at this point, but just know that header files are very important. They are used quite a bit. And we will see that uh, a preprocessor can decide if a header has already been included. So every C source file can ask for the header file to be included again, but it will not be repeated over and over again throughout the, the program. It will only be brought in as necessary if you do the, the uh, includes properly when you set it up. Now take a look at this uh, uh, line of code here. This pound includes standard io.h. We use the less than, greater than. That is really a preprocessor directive, but I want to talk to you about it right now. This tells the preprocessor to go look in the path, in the standard library path, of where these header files are stored for the compiler. So that's defined to the uh, compiler when it's installed, and it's a usually an environment variable of if in the Windows world or, or a, uh, a setup in the uh, Linux world that tells it, uh, a link I should say, that tells it where that standard library is located. Now this one down here, this pound include, uses a double quotes. The double quotes tell the C compiler, don't look in your normal location. We are going to some other directory and we're picking up the included header files for this particular program. So that uh, double quotes is more specific about the location of the header file that's coming in. So header files are created to contain our variable declarations. You should not have functions in header files because you'll never get them compiled. The header files have to be included into something else before it can be compiled like into a .c source file. That's where your functions uh, should stay. So that's uh, just a little bit about header files, and we will be seeing more of them as uh, we create some code later on.